Hey, where's Vin Carsman? I can get him. <laughs> no! Roughly 15 years ago, the airsoft world saw a resurgence in the gas blowback rifle market, majority being gas and mag platforms, and the success was limited to say the least. There were a few brands at the time, churning out fairly realistic platforms that yielded questionable performance. Once they began appearing in the UK, and seeing them struggle to maintain performance in our climate, Many people simply wrote them off entirely as war hangers and showpieces. While that might have been true at that stage, things were about to change. Ten years ago, WE Tech released their G39C to the world, a gas rifle modelled after the HK G36. The carbine looked alright, but it was a gas rifle, and it was made by WE. No one in their right mind would have ever thought that it would have been any good until James at WE Tech showed us its capabilities by torching off 18 magazines in a row on fully automatic. It says a hell of a lot when someone that works for the company proudly displays their product's true potential. Who else does that? No one. Not even Tokyo Marui went to that extent. This meant something, and many of us saw the video, and we were very interested in what this had to offer us. These are still in production, and I had a few of them bought and sold off during that time. So, here we are, 10 years later, the WEG36. Happy birthday to what is quite possibly the best GBBR ever made. Hi folks, Badabing here, thanks for joining me. Guys, if you like content like this and want to show your appreciation for little old Bing, hit that subscribe button. Now, this video is a tribute to my friend Pete. He sadly lost his life to cancer last year, and he was the loveliest dude you could ever meet. He was one of those guys where he would have you crying with laughter to the point where it would begin to hurt. Well, none of us have. <laughs> we got a silver same gun with one and block. I just realised, yeah, yeah you and changed. And a pistol in a box. Yeah. He was ex-forces, and he joined our airsoft group in the mid-2000s. He suffered a great deal from PTSD and often found it hard to play at times. Although when he felt confident, he really gave it his all and was an amazing player to have at your side. Seeing these awesome new Gas G36s, we were all over these, and so was Pete. These little clips of us using them at the rock are the only ones I have of them in game, and it sucks that I don't have any more footage. This review is dedicated yeah. to Pete. <laughs> The WEG36 arrives in a mundane cardboard box. I bought this one not too long ago on a used sales forum for a very good price, and that's one of the best things about these rifles. Either brand new off the shelf or on an internet forum, they are very affordable. So I was able to get back into this platform without any hassle and pick up where I left off. The G36 itself is a well-crafted rifle which is finished to a good standard. There aren't many flaws as a result of sloppy mouldings, it's surprisingly smooth despite the fairly low entry cost. The colouring between all the parts maintains the same tone, with a matte finish and a smooth texture. In hand, the carbine has an incredibly solid construction. 
Every component that makes up the entire frame leaves no wiggle room at all. There must have been some generational improvements since I last owned the G36, because years ago they were plagued with barrel wobble. Now it's not so much of a problem anymore. The handguard uses tabs that align with slots on the gas block to lock it down, and there you go, it's rigid. Functionally, it's as positive as can be. It has a slick charging action, and its bolt lock is generally reliable. So long as the contact point on the carrier remains flat, it'll produce reliable bolt hold open, blowing back to grab the catch with a strong snap. The selector slides into each mode with a healthy click, and its side folding buttstock locks and unlocks with a reassuring clunk. Now, I really do not like the stocks on these G36s. I find the shoulder pad to be uncomfortably long, like it's trying to creep into my armpit. I might replace this with an IDZ stock in time. To top off the astounding fit and function of the G36, the magazines slide into a deep lock like no other magazine I've used. You don't have to tap or tug to make sure it's seated. The upper rim of the magazine shell meets with the bottom of the magwell, and once they kiss, you hear a deep lock grip the mag in place. Zero play. Equally, when you release the magazines, they drop freely. Speaking of those magazines, they are the weakest part of the WEG36 system. The plastic that makes up the shell can be brittle. While of course you can clip these together using the side lugs, it might be best that you don't, as these are so easily broken off. It's okay. The screw under the base plates that holds the gas tank to the shell sits on top of a thin plastic shelf, and this will break if you drop or otherwise mistreat these magazines. If that happens, the contents of the plastic shell will fly out of there. I like to reinforce this shelf with some epoxy glue, and you can use a precautionary piece of tape around the top of the gas tank just in case. Another weak part of their G36 is the plastic charging handle. And these have been known to break as well, so you could invest in an r -Tech aluminium version to prevent this from happening. Internally, you won't find many hard steel components. No surprise there then. Only the pieces which continually take heavy contact loads like the bolt lock insert on the carrier, bolt catch, and one or two other pieces of steel. The rest are softer alloy parts. Now, this may be a bad thing in the grand scheme of things, but in my experience, these run exceptionally well for years without the requirement of those upgrades. That and the WE components are quite accurately specced so as to plug and play without any fitment or running issues. It's for this reason why I and many others avoid using RA tech, you never can tell. So really, I'll just be happy replacing with affordable WE parts as they go. Speaking of RA tech, the stock WE trigger on these rifles don't exactly look like the real G36 triggers. This bothers me a lot on airsoft replicas, but they just don't look right. Our ATEC have a replacement which looks a little more authentic. While it's not 100%, it's still closer than the WE version, so this is my only upgrade at this time. Because this G36 has a good recoil impulse, you have to make sure that things are tightened down. Specifically, you need to keep an eye out for the selector switches. Rotate to fully auto setting, and you'll see two cogs which house grub screws that will retain the switches. If they become loose, you could end up not only losing the selector, but also the tiny ball bearing in the spring that lives underneath. Another piece which has been known to fall out is the roller bearing on the hammer. The pin which holds it in place can work its way out. It's never happened to me, but I've seen it happen on a few occasions to other users. The hop-up adjustment can be found by locking the bolt to the rear and locating the wheel beneath the carry handle. It's not the most ideal places to get to in a hurry, so do your best to adjust it prior to playing. Once your setting has been established, it generally stays true. The hop-up chamber isn't bad at all. It creates a good enough impression on the bucking to launch point fours out to a decent distance as standard, and it can accept upgrade barrels for the TM spec gas blowbacks. Locking the bolt to the rear manually is an awkward thing to do if you don't have an empty magazine to hand, 
and the button within the trigger guard only releases the bolt, not like on the real G36 where you can push the button upwards to lock the working parts rearward, so most of the time I just reach up into the magwell and push up on the bolt catch manually. It's a stupid way to go about it, but this is what we have to deal with. Years ago I made a reverse modification where you can correct this design feature. It's silly, but it worked. Check out this vintage video by tapping the card here. Getting down to the performance of the G36, the FPS hovered around the 340s and 350s using propane and 0.2 BBs. This is from a completely stock G36. The average was 344.2 across the 30 shots. Sometimes the variance between the readings was as much as 20 FPS, so perhaps it's not as consistent as some modern GBBRs. Moving on to shots per gas fill, 5 seconds of propane was equal to 56 shots. This is firing once every second. 10 seconds, 98 shots, and 15 seconds of gas, the rifle fired 146 times before the tank was empty. The most I could fill into the magazine was 17 seconds, but the valve was just too hard for the striker to break a single shot at that capacity, so 146 rounds, that's pretty much what the WEG36 is capable of. This means nothing in reality, but you can compare these results to other gas rifles I reviewed in the past, and while it's not as high as some, it's still not bad at all. Shooting the G36 10 years on and it still has a great thump in the shoulder, and is every bit as good as what you'd feel from a comparable gas rifle. The recoil spring is on the softer side. However, it delivers a sharp snap as it runs, which is a surprise, it really whips it back. The carrier interacting with the hard buffer is what gives you that heavy impact in the shoulder, and adds to its sharp response. The G36 gives you that ideal balance of crisp action with solid feedback, BB1 to BB30 with a definitive lock. After the last shot, the bolt catch snatches working parts with the most positive bite you've ever felt, and it resonates through your shoulder, so you can fill your empty without even looking. The functional positivity extends to the trigger. The squeeze is somewhat heavy, and you have such a narrow window of operation. The take-up is barely a creep, and with that short stack of tension itself is the wall. Returning a couple of millimetres, and you'll not only feel the reset, but you'll also hear it too, allowing you to smoke off rapid semi-auto with minimal effort. Fully auto performance is good fun. It's not super fast, but something about it is pleasing every time you're throwing bursts out there. The feedback produced from sending three or four shots at a time feels positive, like you know exactly how many shots were in that burst because you distinctively felt every single time the bolt cycled through your shoulder. For a complete fully auto magazine dump, you'll be looking for around a 10 second gas charge. At best, I've gotten just over 60 rounds through it before the gas runs out.
Little Tim I dump, test number one, let's go. Dump number two. Mag dump number three. And it's done. If you're blasting it in warm or hot weather, you probably won't even notice a decrease in tempo as you're burning through it. If it's cooler, then obviously you will definitely notice it slow down towards the end of the mag. The issue then is that once the magazines are cold, it takes them a while to return to ambient temperature, because the gas tank is so well insulated due to the plastic shell. I've used the G36 during the winter, and it wasn't totally immune to the cold. The action will slow down, like it will on every other gas rifle using the same fuel. Using regular old propane in those lower temperatures, I found that it could still exist on the field and deliver BBs. It's not amazing but it does work. It just requires more care to keep it running. I didn't want to try and use any hotter gas, as really it's a green gas only rifle. Moving on to the accuracy, it's not bad, not bad at all. I'm using my usual Jeff's Bio 3s, and the collection of groupings at 20 meters isn't far off the Marui M4. I know it's only 20 meters, but still, as a baseline from a WE gas blowback, this is an adequate start to take onto the field. More than adequate when you try heavier loads. I shot Jeff's Bio 4s, and the G36 planted a lot of those BBs right around the center. I had six or seven flyers that planted themselves around the paper and also dropped below the box. However, this tight grouping should extend well when we push the G36 at distance. Firing at range, the maximum distance where the BBs began to hit the deck is about 65 meters. Point threes tend to plant themselves down here. Hitting the mannequin at 50 meters with those rounds is achievable, but I was only able to connect a few times within a magazine. I tried point fours, and they found the target more frequently. The stock bucking and nub can certainly create a good enough impression on this weight, so I reckon I would have gotten away with launching four fives to better effect. Hit. 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 The WEG36 GBBR. What's the score with this 10 year old system? To begin with, it's a very well made gun. The polymer construction is rigid as can be, and it's quite light too. The functionality is at a high standard, bolt lock, charging action, magazine lock, selector switch, trigger response. Each operation is clean and sharp. To this day, the shooting action is amazing. Its hard recoil paired with its crisp snappy cyclic rate still makes it a strong contender among its present GBBR rivals. The gas efficiency is good as well, considering it's an older design. I vividly remember using it on an evening game and reloading the gas just once as I had close to an empty can of Ultra Air at the time. The magazines are fairly lightweight, the stock accuracy is actually good, although like most things, decent accuracy begins with decent ammo. Range is alright as well, and that's down to the hop-up being able to lift those heavy loads as standard. Reliability is high, I think in all the years I've owned these, they've never failed me in-game. Parts availability is excellent. There are a couple of sites within the EU that stock spares, should you need them, as well as plentiful supplies from Asia. It's perfect for beginners because it's easy to disassemble and learn the mechanics. This GBBR is very affordable. That goes for the units themselves and spare parts. Finally, WE have several G36 variants to choose from if the C model isn't to your liking. The bad news? 
First of all, the plastic magazine shell is not durable at all. The magazines themselves by design are very cumbersome and thick. Some parts are soft and do have a certain lifespan, although your mileage may vary. The unrealistic operation of the bolt catch within the trigger guard makes for an awkward manual bolt lock. The bolt lock engagement point on the carrier can wear away on the corner, so in time it may not be as reliable. The hop of adjustment is annoying to access. This has limited aftermarket upgrade support, FG Airsoft used to make little enhancements, but sadly they aren't around anymore. Sometimes it can be difficult to find these rifles outside of Asia, mostly every retailer by me are all out of stock, and as this GBBR is unlicensed, it lacks the H&K trademarks, so we have to live with the ridiculous factory designation 999C. Now, when I review airsoft guns, sometimes something breaks during the course of making the video. Uh oh, what's going on here? So what did I break on the G36? Well, after roughly 30 full auto magazine dumps, I destroyed the valve striker. The tail end broke and ended up jamming the operation, which resulted in a click rather than a bang. As I've owned a few of these G36s over the years, I had a couple of spares lying around and it was back to normal in minutes. In all this time, I think that was the only critical failure I've ever had with these. To put some perspective on it, the Marui M4 MWS has failed me twice. Only nozzle spring related, but a failure is a failure. It's been such a pleasure to rediscover this lost gem of the gas rifle world, and it's a platform that really means a lot to me. Every time I see one it instantly reminds me of Pete, so perhaps I'm always going to hold it in such high regard and be a little biased towards it. Are you shooting at me? No. Are you sure? But the truth is, it really is one of the best gas rifles available. Following its debut, WE's G36 was highly praised by the players that adopted it, and it was all due to one defining characteristic, the performance. There weren't many like it at the time which had the ability to be thrown out of the box, onto the playing field, and stick the landing, making it look effortless, and it could do all that for around £200. You really cannot go wrong. If you're getting into gas rifles and you don't have the money to go all in for the best Japanese GBBR, why not buy the best from Taiwan? It's a fantastic first gas rifle. Not only does it run like a train, but it's an exceptionally well made rifle too, and more customizable with handguards, rails and stocks than you might think. From a beginner's point of view it makes a lot of good sense. Why spend upwards of 6 to 800 on a gas rifle bundle that you might not even get on with anyway? You could spend a fraction of that on this, and if it's not your thing, you can sell it on without having spent a boatload of money on a rifle plus all those expensive magazines. I always recommend this GBBR to anyone, whether it be gas rifle beginners or GBBR veterans, and as it's easy to take down and disassemble, that makes for a good platform to learn the craft, and learn how to get the very best out of them. It's those reasons why I think this is one of the best gas rifles ever made. It certainly was 10 years ago, in 2010, and it's still as relevant today as it was back then. If you made it this far, thanks for watching the video my friends, I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, hit the like, and if you haven't already done so, subscribe, and become notified when my new videos go live. You can see regular updates on my other social media platforms, and it'll be great to see you there. Until next time, look after yourselves, catch you in a bit.